I'd like to begin us with some words to center ourselves in the spirit of All Saints Day. Let the saints sing for joy because we are children of the living God. From the words of the psalmist found in Psalm 107, O oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I invite you to say this with me from your homes where you're at. God's steadfast love endures forever. Say it again with me. God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Our first song this morning is a treat. Angie, where did you go? Do, 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 do. We are going to have uh, Miss Angie. Let's see if I can um, pin you here. Uh, Angie is going to lead us or share a special song with us this morning called Oceans. It's sung by Hillsong. If you're someone who listens to it on the radio, um, you'll, you'll be familiar with it through there. Uh, if you would, uh, Angie, I'll let you take it and I'll mute myself this morning. Thank you. 
Amen. Look at all those claps. Amen. 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 The scripture lesson today comes to us from Revelation chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked and there was a great multitude that, could, that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out with a, in a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where, and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will, they will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in us, and for the word of God around us, we say, thanks be to God. Folks, uh, time for all ages. My family likes playing cards. I should do this so you can see, right? You see, I have a whole deck of cards here with all, they haven't really been mixed up well enough. It's a brand new deck. I grew up playing cards with my family. And honestly, I haven't played a lot lately since my grandpa passed away. We are euchre players in our house. Um, yeah, some of you can relate to that, a little bit of euchre. Um, I know wherever Elaine is at, Elaine knew my grandpa. I don't know if Elaine ever went to euchre night or not. I think you did for a visit for me, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, when my grandpa was alive, uh, he and my grandma, just before he passed, he and my grandma moved to Falcon View Estates back there. And uh, my grandpa would take everybody <laughs> for Euchre Night all the time. He would brag about his little winnings jar uh, <laughs> every time we would go to visit. And I was one of the last people to play one of his best hands of Euchre with him, like one of his last hands of Euchre with him just a week or two before he passed. And I'm thankful for that. That's something I'll always hold sacred. Every time I sit down and play Euchre with somebody, that's a memory that comes back to me, remembering a saint in my life. Now, you see, I like that I think we could call God's family a deck of cards. And here's why. There's a lot of different faces and colors and shapes on these cards, right? I think we could do that. We could say some of us are, you know, maybe we're nines. <laughs> In the game of Euchre, nines and nines and tens are bad, right? We, we Sometimes we throw that, that hand out. But sometimes we have rough lives and we could call it a nine life. Sometimes, I better pull these up here because, you know, we're going to shuffle them up a little bit. Sometimes our lives might be a little more royal in their making. Sometimes, what do we got? 
they're even poorer. Maybe we're hungry all the time. Maybe we don't get the world doesn't go the way that we want it to. I think I did that. And sometimes maybe they're just subpar. They are what they are sometimes. You know, when we talk about our lives and the people in our lives, we could talk about people who also are, you know, facing one another. Perhaps we're in agreement with one another. Um, our deck is all shuffled and mixed around like you saw me do. And I totally lost my attempt at doing a magic trick here with you all while trying to give the message. I'm a little distracted trying to figure out how to get the cards to work and it's not going to work with me this morning, but they're all facing the same direction again. <laughs> it's not going to work out like I hoped it would. However, here's the thing. I think we're all like a bunch of deck of cards that God brings together. We are all a part of God's family in all of our different faces and shapes. And sometimes we're facing the same direction and in agreement with one another. And sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're facing apart from one another and our backs are turned to one another. Hopefully, we are striving to be like the saints in our lives. And when I think of saints, those are people in my life who I honor, who embody the characteristics of God. They embody patience, love, grace, and peace, and they bring people together. To me, that's what All Saints Day is all about, is celebrating those in God's family, those who are present with us today, and those who have gone before us, and how God brings us all together to be a part of the family of God that is the deck of cards with all of our many faces, all of our many beliefs. And even when we don't agree with people, God still brings us together into this beautiful array of family, right? Even all of those who have gone way before us, back in Jesus's time to those who have passed this year, and maybe those people who still do that in our lives today, still bring us together with hope and love and peace. Those are the people, when we talk about saints, that's what we're talking about. People who embody Jesus, those who stand up for other people in our schools, when people are bullying, when our friends maybe are bullying somebody who isn't like us in the school. Those people can be saints because they're standing up for those who are oppressed. And that's what Jesus would do. Saintly Saints that we honor are those that embody the characteristics of God through Jesus Christ, through our human witness. And you look around the computer screen today, you can see many people who you could call saints on this screen today. I know I can. We all are embodiments of Christ's love. Our challenge as we walk this path is to remember that we carry that witness to the world through our actions, through our witness to one another, and especially to those who are not like us. May we remember that. Let us pray. God, thank you for the many faces that we see in a deck of cards when we look at them. Thank you for the many faces that resemble you in all of the people that we encounter. God, help us to embody your presence, Christ's grace and peace and love to all whom we encounter so that we may be saintly people to all who we engage with in this world, in this lifetime. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm wondering, do you guys hear crackling? My candle is loud because it's a woodwick candle and I love the sound of it, but I'm hoping it's not coming through on your end because um, I don't want it to be a distraction. But um, as we close out this, our, our moment for all people, we're not really closing it out. We're just continuing in worship. Uh, now would be the time if we were in the person, I would move to the table that I prepared and begin the moment of remembrance. So get your candle ready your extra candle, because there will be a time for you to light your candle uh, as we go through. The video that I've prepared is kind of long. It's about 10 minutes. There's some introduction. There's 
the, the time of lighting the candles that I, where I name everyone's name, who are members of our congregation or people who, who were attending our congregation who have passed this year. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody, but um, then we will, I, I close that time with a prayer and invite you also to light your candle at that time. And then it closes with uh, the song, the hymn for all the saints that's not sung, it's just a recording. So um, for those of you on the phone, hang tight through all of that. Uh, imagine the sanctuary with a table of e a picture of each of these individuals and a candle in front of them because that's what the con the rest of us on the computer are able to see this morning. So get your candles ready, friends. Um, All Saints Day is an opportunity to give thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith. It is a time to celebrate our history, what United Methodists call the tradition of the church. From the early days of Christianity, there is a sense that the church consists of not all living believers, but also all who have gone before us. For example, in Hebrews 12, the author encourages Christians to remember that a great cloud of witnesses surrounds us, encouraging us, cheering us on. On All Saints Day, we remember all those, famous or obscure, who are a part of the communion of saints we confess whenever we recite the Apostles' Creed. We tell the stories of the saints to glory gone, Alongside the likes of Paul from the New Testament, Augustine, Martin Luther, and John and Charles Wesley, we tell stories of the grandmother who took us to church every Sunday. We remember the pastor who prayed with us in the hospital and the neighbor who changed the oil in the family car. We give thanks for the youth leader who told us Jesus loved us, the kindergarten Sunday school teacher who showered us with that love, and the woman in the church who brought us groceries when we were out of work. Retelling these stories grounds us in our history. These memories teach us how God has provided for us through the generosity and sacrifice of those who have come before us. The stories of the saints encourage us to be all God has created us to be. We think of the inspirational people with whom we worship on Sunday and those across the world we will never meet. We celebrate fellow United Methodists who inspire us and those of other denominations whose lives encourage us as well. We give thanks for those with whom we agree as well as those whose views we do not share. Additionally, we remember and pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ who faithfully follow Jesus in places where being labeled a Christian puts them in harm's way. Today, on All Saints Day, let us give thanks for both the saints in glory and those on earth who have led us to Jesus. As they have shared the gospel with us, may we add our voices so someone else may hear about the grace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for the lives of the saints that we will now share together in remembering. Mary Goodrich. Catherine Hilton. Jason Irish.
Benjamin Webb. Wilma Spiker. Mary Ellen Bartlett. At this time, I would like to invite you to light the candle that you have with you this morning. As you do so, name the name of the loved one or loved ones that you would like to honor this morning. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for all the saints who have ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses wherever your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands used as weave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head ragged or aproned, blue collared or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, and for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, O God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
loss, dying, death, and grief. They're all heavy things that our American culture often buries along with our loved ones. We're, we very quickly deal with the immediate details of, of preparing the funeral and all of the things that go along with that, making sure we have the right clothes and attire and food and that the service is just right. And then go on to the next item of business when that day is done. That's not the truth for all those who remain closest to that loved one. Who are still left with all of the details left to tie up and finish doing. As they continue in their grief. The business of the estate sending thank you cards, sending death certificates for insurance purposes and all of the things that you have to do, including transferring ownership of cars and maybe houses and, and all of those things with titles and all of those other legalities that are left to be dealt with. Those who are left behind in this world continue to be faced with a world of memories as the world continues on. They continue with an empty space next to them. Many of you, probably perhaps all of you, can relate to this in some way, shape, or form, as we've all have lost somebody in our lives, most definitely. Many of you have lost some this year, not just one, but several. And somehow the church has followed in a similar, pa similar pattern of only talking about death in the, in the context of losing loved ones at funerals. And that's it. And I think that that is a failure of the church. That's something that we've talked about in Bible study in our Monday night group several times that has been brought up in the course of my time with you all that, that we just don't talk about it from the pulpit anymore just like we don't talk about it on a day-to-day -day basis with one another in our normal lives. You know, when we gather on that day of celebrating the life, we always talk about the, not just the death that the person is no longer suffering, but the hope that we have in the resurrection and eternal life that we find in relationship with our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The only other time that we really talk about death in the context of the church is on Easter Sunday when we remind, are reminded that death does not have the last word. That love does, that God does, that eternal life wins. This is the hope that we cling to in our Christian faith. And so we gather even on the hardest days of all in our personal lives, when we struggle the most, we still show up to worship in community in whatever form that takes, virtual parking lot, in person, maybe just worshiping with friends in your home. We gather to still worship this God of full of who is full of possibility as we continue to have opportunities for new life and eternal life with all the saints who have gone before us. That's the promise. That's the reason we worship this wonderful, marvelous God who loves us, whose steadfast love endures forever. So shared, we've brought this topic up in Bible study, and it's ironic that it continues to bubble up in all of the different aspects of topics that we've covered, that it's bubbled to the surface, that it really would be beneficial for us to spend more time talking about death and grief together. You know, I wonder what this world would look like right now if we were all a little more honest in the things that we have lost in the last nine months now, eight and eight plus months going on, who knows how long, how much, not just the people, but the events, the things that we have missed out on. That is all grief. That is all loss. It's not just losing a loved one. It's all of the things that we lose over time that we need to take time and mourn. 
and a teaser for a future date and time when it all comes together is, is that one of the things that I've been working on in the midst of uh, the pandemic is trying to create some form of Bible study. And, and my mind keeps getting bogged down with this because it could be a very large Bible study if I look at it from the whole context of all of the things that would benefit us to explore a little deeper in, in what God has to say about these things when it comes to talking about dying and death and what it means to walk with people in grief and what it means for us to walk in grief ourselves. There's a lot of helpful resources that exist when it comes to talking about all of those things, which is perhaps why it's taking me so long to figure out how I want to organize that Bible study. I'm oddly excited about it to enter into those conversations with those who choose to join in that study, to, to explore how to dive a little deeper and walk together with one another so that we can work on expressing our faith and our collective hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The reminder that God wipes away our tears as listed in the scripture today, as you heard. I am one who believes that the more we talk about these things that society has made taboo, instead of putting them off or packing them away into some dark secret place of our lives, that the more holistic and Christ-like we are with one another, instead of putting off for tomorrow what could be done today to take the time to be present with one another, to walk with one another in our pain. You know, avoiding the topic of death is not something, it is not something that is typical of the traditional church. One of the things that was shared in the Bible study is that there seems to be a shift over time, just as within the church, just as there has been within culture. Perhaps we dance around our own insecurities about having the right things to say or do in the midst of someone else's great loss. Instead of just being present with them through phone calls, through short visits, through sharing memories and speaking the loved one's name. Those of you who've lost someone this year, especially, I'm sure you long not only to hear their voice, but to hear their name spoken in conversations with friends about what they might be doing, or to hear a memory or a funny thing that happened with that individual. In our deepest, darkest times of grief, sometimes that's the simplest thing that we can do is to share a memory with that loved one who lost someone. And maybe it's just checking in to see how you're doing and being okay with whatever that response is. But in most cases, many who are left behind are longing to hear their loved one's name spoken. How the lot and to hear how the lives of their spouse, their child, their sibling, their relative have changed the world, changed other people's lives. It is how their witness lives on in the world, not just to that loved one in particular, but to everybody. The more we share the stories, the more we share the memories and speak the name, the more the witness goes on. The same is true when we speak of God, folks, when we speak of Jesus. The more we tell the stories, the more the witness goes on. And the more the love is shared. In the early church and even in biblical times, before the church even started, as we read in Deuteronomy last week, we learned that loved ones grieved for more than just three days, right? I said, I made that comment last week that we only get three days off in the working world to grieve a loved one. And the scripture in Deuteronomy tells us that they grieved for 30 days. It seems like an, an incredible amount of time to us who are more concerned about getting back to being productive and doing more work. And yet, the pattern of the early church and for many Eastern cultures, even today, is that they take 30, 60, 90 days to spend grieving their loved ones. 
Not to mention the fact that birthdays and anniversaries, anniversary of their death, people in, in the early church, I'm talking like really like first century, uh, they would take all the family and friends and they would come back to the grave site, what we would call, they would call catacombs, and have a meal at that grave site together. Such an interesting tradition that we've lost over time. Sure, we have the meal the day of the funeral, or we used to. I'm not sure what we live into in this post, uh, in this COVID era, and how we do that in safe measures, because food is an important process of this journey, because it's around the table where memories are shared. Not that that prohibits us from sharing those memories with our loved ones, with those who have lost others. It wasn't that just the spouse went to the grave. It was the whole family. All of the loved ones brought their dish to pass. You could think about it like that. We're good Methodists. We like to potluck, right? We bring our dishes and we show up and we grieve and we share the memories together. That would happen annually. It's partly also why we get the, the tradition of the saints and the Catholic Church and, and why those days are big, because they take the time to remember the stories of the people who had such foundational impact on the faith and the tradition. Again, it's interesting when you talk with people from other cultures that, that those traditions still exist today. Unfortunately, not so much in American culture. I do my best and I fall short in this sometimes as a pastor to remember all of the anniversaries of people's deaths. But I've tried to hold true with my own family to call on those days when my grandfather's passed away to call and just even without acknowledge, like silently saying grandpa's name, not even silently, naming grandpa's name on that day that he passed, on the day that we celebrated his life, sharing a memory. And the amount of joy that it brings to my grandmothers every time is tremendous. Those dates, we all hold true. We all spend a little, those of us who lost people and, and on certain days, you know, you know what those days bring emotionally. Why don't we take a lesson from the early church and remember one another when those days come around. Pick up the phone, call one another share God's love and grace, share a memory, and maybe just sit silently, even if it is on the other side of the phone, that's okay. We get uncomfortable in silence. Silence is not a bad thing. It's actually quite holy. Take a, take a lesson from the early church, and I encourage and challenge you to look at your calendar and see where those dates fall and who you might be able to call and remember on those days, or maybe that you might be able to call and remember today and hold space with on this day that we celebrate All Saints Day. Now you might be wondering, like, are All Saints churchy people? Are they people who are just strictly religious? Or are they those who take responsibility for the world and actively resist evil and justice? evil and injustice as Jesus did. And my answer to that is yes to both of those things. There are people who do good for this world who I would celebrate as saints that may not be the most devout people in the world, but I still look up to them. I still honor them in some way, shape, or form. Just as each of us holds people near and dear to us who might be lifted and honored as saints in our own lives. When I talk about saints in the context of All Saints Day, I always like to include those who have gone before, not just in this year, but years prior, but also those who are living. As I said earlier, if you look around the screen, you will acknowledge that there are several people on this screen that you probably claim as saints and your faith journey. As we begin a new month and enter into the final two months of what has been a challenging year, may we take time, friends, to pause to give thanks for those saints living and not living today. 
those who have passed in the year and for those who have passed long before, who have left an imprint on our lives and our faith. Take that time, folks. Light the candles. Your challenge today that I want to leave you with, I think I've already left you with a couple little nuggets and hopefully another today. Take time to remember those saints in your life, not just by the candles. Take time to write a note and send it to those who are living. Take time to send a note maybe to those who have left, somebody who was left behind, somebody who lost someone near and dear to them. Write the note to somebody who you honor as a saint in your life. Give thanks to God for their presence in your life and share with them why it is that they have been a witness to your light and how you can be that light moving forward and how they've taught you to be a better Christian and a better person. That is your challenge. Remember those people, give thanks for those people in a month of thanks. How great would it be? Gosh, I would hope. It'd be really cool actually to think if we all had, do we have enough people to claim one card a day to send out one card a day to each of those people? What a way to live into this time of gratitude in the month of November, to take that as a practice this month, to send one card a day to somebody who you treasure through your faith journey, through your life. Give thanks to God for them. Maybe that's somebody who has passed. You could write a letter to them and then tuck it away and maybe even burn it in the flame of the candle as a prayer offering to them. That would be okay. That's a healthy thing to do. With all of that, friends, may you take time to be intentional and share God's love and peace and grace as we collectively remember that God does indeed wipe away our tears and God's love and presence with us always will endure forever. Let us pray. In life and in death, oh God, you bless us. When trouble overwhelms us, you save us. When sorrow overtakes us, you comfort us. When death overcomes us, you overcome death and raise us to new life. You promise us joy everlasting and even now give us glad hope and glimpses of your realm, which is to come when Christ makes all things new. For calling us your children and bestowing upon us such great love, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a couple of prayer requests to share with you. Um, and we have Miss Charlene with us this morning, but she was on my list of things to share with you today. Uh, Charlene took a fall or two, perhaps, in the couple of the last couple of weeks. Uh, she is recovering from getting a pin in her finger, uh, which they couldn't fix in the emergency room, but I don't think this is the right finger. I don't remember which finger it is, to be honest with you. Sorry, Charlene. Um, and uh, so she's got a pin to fix her finger and uh, she's got a pain block in her shoulder to help her um, hopefully get back to some level of recovery. Um, the church family who is recovering from COVID, uh, some, the symptoms are so inconsistent of this illness, folks. Uh, it's interesting to talk with people who are navigating this, who have such drastically different symptoms, uh, even within the same household, um, who continue to wrestle with energy levels, uh, even months after they've had the illness. So hold those who have uh, had the illness, who continue, who actively have it, and who have had it, but are still recovering months later. Um, uh, it's unfortunately, it is a long time recovery, uh, and we're still not certain if some of the symptoms of this illness are long term or um, indefinite. Uh, so, continue to hold those folks in prayer. Um, and also, a fun announcement uh, I think I shared last week that Maria was expecting a, a, a new grandson. She welcomed him. I believe she has been down to see him, uh, and he is one sweet cute little baby boy. <laughs> uh, so she is rejoicing that she's a grandma yet again, and uh, this time with uh, a, a beautiful baby boy. So um, hold those in prayer. Um, 
any others that you want to share, you want to unmute and share with one another right now, you're welcome to do so. Um, Continued prayers for my brother-in-law, Steve Janke. He is still in ICU. It's been a week and a half with COVID. Ugh. Three of his other family members do also have it, but their symptoms are much min more minor. I think we should all keep uh, Tuesday in our prayers for whatever happens that we can all accept. Yeah, thank you for that. Around this space of Zoom, we have many differing opinions and that's okay because the world would be a very boring place if we all thought alike. That's not the way God made us. And yet we're still called to love one another and, and remember that we are all a part of the same deck of cards, right? <laughs> That God's love is what holds us together, not our political affiliations, not our specific beliefs in, in all of the polity of the church, but it's God's love that holds us together. And so we pray for the election, the results, and all of the things that will follow and pray for God's love and light to shine through. Others that you would lift this morning? Okay, friends, let us turn to God for a word of prayer this morning. Hear our cries, O God, come quickly to our aid. Most gracious and holy God, you have gathered us from east and west, north and south, and you have made us into your people. You shower us with blessings and give us songs of joy. When trouble comes, you hear our cries and lead us to safety. Hear our prayers for those in trouble, O Lord. For your blessed and broken church, we pray. For those who are entrusted with power. For all those who have lost their way. For those who suffer at the hands of others. For those who languish in hunger or thirst. For all who teach and those who would learn. For those who are sick or dying and those who care for them. For those whose needs are known only to you. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, for you know our needs even before we ask them, and your spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. With faith in your merciful kindness, we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church let, <laughs> Mira, you're the first face that I saw when I looked. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Little joy <laughs> on the computer screen. Uh, let God's work be within you, dear friends. 
and within the memory of the saints that you celebrate today as you offer gifts with glad and joyful hearts. That's what it's about when it comes to giving back to God's church, to give back to God's kingdom. We do so in memory of those who have gone before us, who have instilled those things in our lives. And so the opportunity is before you to continue to give to the church, to the ministries, and to the justice work that we do in the community of Freeland and beyond as the United Methodist Church. Folks, again, we are in a holding pattern right now. Um, no decision has been made about whether or not we're going to be in person next week as numbers continue to increase uh, with COVID. Um, I'm really wrestling and praying with whether or not uh, it, it is safe and that challenge is going out to council members as well. And, and if coming back to in-person worship is the safe thing for us to do right now. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll try to get that word out as soon as that decision is officially made. Um, I know the bishop and the cabinet are having those conversations together and whether or not uh, we as a denomination continue to meet in person if it's safe for us to do so. So um, all of that said, as I shared in the email last night, that uh, in order for us really to come back into the building, we need support. We need volunteers to, to handle the soundboard and the Zoom. Uh, this space on Sunday mornings, that takes at least two people to do every week. So if you're somebody who's willing to serve in that capacity, I need to know so I can schedule you uh, instead of being in limbo all week of uh, who, can, who can be serving in what capacity. Um, that's that's really the first step in the right direction and then it's the question of wrestling with the answer of is it good for us to be in person or not i know we missed that space i know it was wonderful to be back in the building and um just very concerned as we watch the numbers continue to change uh so stay tuned uh, continue to know that your church is doing faithful ministry. Um, things are, yep, a little different this year, but we are still doing great things, folks. You have collected so much food for our community, and that's a tremendous blessing that we're able to give it back out. We've done backpacks. Um, you know, the Turners are down at uh, Eastside Soup Kitchen regularly. If you're looking for a place to serve, I'm sure Patty and Bill would love to help get you signed up and in plugged in for that. Um, and, and all of the ways that we can be serving the community in this time. So there are ways that we can do that safely in open spaces, hopefully, um, and with minimum impact. Uh, also remember the angel tree as well. Uh, contact Betty again if you want more information about that. Um, but we give thanks for the gifts that you have given to this church for the ministry of this church as we continue to be the church in God's world at this point in time. Again, remember you can give online through Give Plus or by going to our church website, uh, freelandumc.org. There's a Give tab. Uh, you can download the app, you can mail your check in, or you can drop it by the church box. That's not a mailbox, but it's a lockbox that uh, Melissa and I monitor. So all of the ways for all of the things that we need to do in this time are available for you. Um, so let us offer a prayer over the gifts to be given this week, the gifts that have been given. Um, those of you, I know if you've given checks in the last couple of weeks, they haven't been counted. I'm hoping we can do that either tomorrow or Tuesday uh, early this week. So know that if you have a check that's hanging, I'm sorry uh, with, with being uh, intentionally socially distanced this last week uh, that did not happen and get deposited like it was supposed to uh, while I initially had planned. So uh, stay tuned. Um, but thank you again for your generosity. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us as we worship here in this space. Their diversity reminds us of your infinite grace to all your creatures. Thank you for the vision of a world at peace, paradise restored, where no one hungers, no one thirsts, and no one is wanting. You guide us to the source of living water and invite us to drink deeply of your love. Your magnificent generosity evokes our deepest thanks. And so we receive these gifts that we may join in the great cloud of witnesses as we share our gifts with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our final song today is the Hymn of Promise. And uh, I will share that. I believe you have the Hymn of Promise in your books if you still have them handy for the words. Um, otherwise, just listen to the, to the music. I'm sure those of you who have been around the United Methodist Church have known it and probably can sing it by heart uh, wherever you're at. Excuse me this morning. This day, every day, a taste and see that the Lord is good, church. May the God of hope keep you until Christ comes to take us all home. Amen. Amen. Stay well. Be well. You're welcome again to hang around and visit if you would like to unmute yourselves. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week. Unless you hear otherwise from me, plan to be online. Um, let's just hold that pattern for the time being. <laughs>